Bagger has been brought back to life. The painless Ologs who slew him are still at their most powerful. In order to defeat them and destroy their fort, Bagger would have to build up a force of his own. A force strong enough to rival the immense power of these painless Ologs. But first he needed a base camp. A large area not too far from the fort, but still hidden under a cave, seemed perfect for Bagger's new temporary base camp. It offered everything he needed. High walls, lookout towers, areas to train. This base had it all. There was only one problem. This area was under control by the Bloodlust Orc. A very violent orc who'd made an alliance with the painless Ologs. He had to be removed. Baga set out to hunt him down, along with a fellow alchemist who'd travelled far and wide to see Baga. He was amazed that he'd been brought back to life. He agreed to help take over this area and establish a camp. Hey, look at those fools, acting like they own a place. <laughs> Who's ready to reclaim this road? No one gets through here, or I'll have your reds. Flack the Alchemist charged in, drawing the bloodlust attention. Talion took advantage of this distraction and dived in to deliver a massive stealth blow. I've better things to do than dance with birds! But this only enraged the bloodlust. I know you've got one of your boys spying on us! It's only a matter of time before I find him and send you his head! His words worried Talion. Every orc he'd spoken to spoke about a spy in their depths. Had they discovered Baga the Frogblood? Only time would tell. Talion, enraged by the possible discovery of his spy, began a vicious attack using his explosive sword before using his poison elven light. Baga then charged in. I was slightly worried he may be, let's say, rusty from being dead for so long, but he seemed to be able to hold his own while Flack was there, who charged in delivering a massive flaming blow. The surrounding fire terrified Baga. He's always been mortally afraid of fire, this is what the Painless used to kill him, and his time in the afterlife has not cured this fear. The bloodlust orc soon came to the fire. Flack reminding us while the alchemists were so revered. It reminded me of how powerful Baga used to be. With the bloodlust now gone, we could easily take this area and establish a base camp. After the fight, Talion searched for Baga, but he was long gone, terrified by the flames of Flack the Alchemist. Flack informed Talion that he was utterly astounded by Baga's revival, his resurrection. He spoke about how the Alchemist clan had wanted this power for a long time, but they'd never been able to figure it out. He went on to say that despite not having the power of resurrection, the Alchemists did have the power to revive. Using their potions and tonics they harvest from the dead. This reminded Talion of the first thing Baga ever said to him. What a gift you left me. Your body is a vast library of elixirs and tonics that I will use to fuel the Dark Lord's army. Flack stated that under the right circumstances, an elixir could be created to return Baga back to his former glory. Before the painless, before Talion's shamings, before it all, Baga could become strong again. Man swine! The Overlord says he's got a gift for you. Come by any time to claim it. <laughs> the painless Overlord had sent a message. Talion intended to send one right back to him. But the messenger was slippery. Talion summoned his poison grog to chase him down. Usually this chase would be easy for Talion, but he had a lot on his mind. Several orcs now had spoken about capturing a spy. Which one was it? Was it Bag of the Frog Blood? A huge poison flume unleashed from the grog, covering everything in its path with hot acid, combined with molten poison boulders. A graceful dive off the grog, but the messenger wasn't having it. He soon sir came to the poison before he was promptly executed. Message received and replied to. Back at the home base, Talion reconvened with Baga. They took in the sights of their new perfect base. This was everything they would need to take down the painless fortress. Just then, Talion's senses went off. He could feel a familiar presence nearby. A presence he'd not felt for a very long time. He travelled to the outskirts of the new base camp to investigate what this presence was. There he found familiar orcs that didn't quite believe Baga had come back from the dead. But on their way to the base camp, they came across this Skinner Olaf. Right! I've counted everything here! 
So don't any of you maggots get sticky fingers, or you'll have fewer than ten of them. We'll find some good use for those supplies. Sharp Norsko the Rat Hunter. One of Talion's failed run to riches experiments. But he wasn't alone. Accompanying him were two more runt orcs. The Lookout and the Mad Eye. They were attacking one of the painless Olog's followers. Talion didn't want to get involved. He wanted to see just what these runts could do. But the Skinner had other plans. I'll skin you for this interruption. Although, I was already planning to anyway. The Skinner, clearly infatuated by Talion's enticing hide, didn't realize the amount of arrows that were being poured into him by the runts. I will get you at the time of my choosing! Had enough and tried to exit, but Talion didn't let him, freezing his massive foot in place. Mad Eye laying into his back with poison attacks while the archers peppered him from afar. The Skinner's body eventually succumbing to this combined barrage. To the fight, Talion approached the runts. They told him that they'd heard of Baga's resurrection and wanted to join up. It seems that news of Baga's resurrection was spreading across Middle Earth, with many orcs travelling there wanting to join up or just witness that this miracle actually happened. The runts, excited by finding Talion, ran off to find more foes. Talion chased after them, eventually leading him to the oozing tar pits where he found the runts engaging a very unpleasant Olog. Light goes out, ghouls go down. The foil spawn Olog was challenging a group of ghouls to combat, testing his strength against these monsters, these creatures of the night. The foil spawn, completely taken aback by the lookout's screams, threw his torch to the floor and began to attack the ghouls. Talion watched from above as the battle commenced. The runs were clever, attacking from a distance while the foil spawn dealt with the ghouls. Being weak runs their entire life means they had to develop special techniques to take on stronger foes. Arrow after arrow was sent into the foil spawn's body. He knew he had to react now before his body would succumb to these attacks. Foil Spawn launched a poison vial at Zoom the Lookout before charging in, but the arrows eventually. Zoom the Lookout had defeated another powerful Olog. He was ecstatic from this victory. He loved nothing more than to kill a powerful foe while shouting Lookout and peppering them with arrows. Truly, Zoom the Lookout was sick in the head. After they were healed, they ran off into the distance, screaming that something big was coming. But there wasn't time to chase after them. Talion could sense something happening back at the base. <laughs> One of the deranged Bagavarians was under attack by the painless mercenaries. I shall not will. Prepare to attack. The Blood Flood Olog. One of the painless' strongest mercenaries along with his elite blood guard. And he was backed up by another mysterious Olog that Talion did not recognize. The battle commenced and it was immediately chaos, fire and blood everywhere. The Blood Flood picked up Talion and savagely punched him across the battle, while the other orc and the elite guard focused on Baga. And then it happened. One of the elite guard picked up Baga and broke his arms off, while Talion was distracted by the Blood Flood trying to finish him off. This elite guard ripped Baga's arms clean off. It was a miracle Talion was able to deflect this hammer going straight for his head, but as he glanced over at Baga's desolate body, he was caught off guard by the Blood Flood's powerful attacks. This time the poison hammer would not miss. Talion and Baga were defeated. As a result of this mercenary killing Talion, and one of his elite guards killing Baga. He was given a promotion amongst the painless ranks. Talion arose and immediately jumped into action. He could sense something bad happening. He knew that if one Baga variant was being targeted, surely more were being targeted. He couldn't let more of them die. 
raced across the map to get to Bag of the Abuse before it was too late. When he arrived, the chaos had already started. Bag of the Abuse was fighting a grog, but he had been ambushed by two more of the painless mercenaries. He said about killing the grog, he had to remove this unknown element from the fight. Once the grog was dealt with, they could have a look at these mercenaries. One was a very strong cave rat, the other was a merciless orc, trying to prove himself as a painless. With the grog now dead, Talion and Bag of the Abuse could focus on fighting off these mercenaries. This fight was much less chaotic than the last fight with Talion landing deadly blows on these foes. This enraged the cave rats, but that didn't matter. A combination strike from Baga and Talion sent his body clattering to the floor. Baga immediately turned and charged at the remaining assassin. Talion casually walked over. He didn't need to intervene. Baga's axe piercing the terror's torso, turning him into a corpse. Clearly these assassins were underprepared. They didn't know how strong Baga the Abused would be, and they probably didn't count on Talion being there. A few hours later, Talion found the runts outside the gates of the Painless Fortress. They'd amassed a small army and were hell-bent on destroying this Painless Fort in Baga's name. The walls of the Painless Fort were decorated with the corpse of various Baga variants. He'd arrived just in time to witness this carnage. A wall of arrows rained down on the runts as they charged in, their bodies clattering against these strong, heavy, reinforced steel walls. The Rat Hunter runt trying to lead his forces but seemingly failing. Zoon leading his best men up the walls while poison tipped onto them. Arrows taking out good soldiers every few seconds from above. The painless pride of themselves on a strong fort. The runts were truly not prepared for this strength. Mad Eye leading his forces around the side to try and scale these treacherous walls. Once they made it over the walls, they were faced by huge behemoth logs. The runts had never faced such a ferocious enemy like this before. It seems like this fortress wasn't just the painless, it was backed up by other strong types of Olongs. Give me pain, sweet, delicious pain. I want to devour it all, swallow it and have it fester in my guts until they explode in more glorious agony. All of them completely and utterly obsessed with pain. I can't imagine fighting an enemy that actually shows joy when you inflict pain on them. The runs were truly outclassed by the strength and size of these goliaths. Zoon the lookout was immediately knocked down by the strong Olog. His powerful shout sent fear down the spines of all the runs. And in this instant they realised they were outclassed. They realised they'd made a mistake at rushing in here. Talion tried his best to heal the runs as they progressed through the fortress. And then it was his turn to meet the pit fighter. One ugly creature talk. Around with me. More right after this confrontation, Talon was almost caught off guard by a painless old dog. Think about defeating me. You're thinking about it, aren't you? Talion chuckled to himself. These old logs definitely have character. But were they strong? They soon proved that by demolishing every single run that assaulted the fort. Until all that was left was Talion, standing alone against the full force of the Painless Olog. The dark power of Sauron speaks through me and screams into your mind! With such mindless rage as this, even Talion didn't stand a chance. In the next episode of the story of Baga. <laughs> so it falls to me to put you down. In my search for you, I've walked a lot of miles.